demos, mostly the one I'm worried about is this. This is the one that gets people in trouble because there's a few steps to it. So what you have to have, they tell me already opened this disposable kit here, which comes with this orange wrapper on top of it. Orange wrapper, just to pause for a minute. Has an implant in it. Nurses, make sure at people opening, please make sure you don't throw this away because Correct. the nurses are having to dumpster dive for this. And it's not fun. The reason why it is there's fun. two cement plugs in here. There's a plastic large one and a plastic small one. She's already pulled out the small one somewhere. And uh, there's other different things that we'll use. Um, and you won't know until the doctor sizes the femur distally to see which one you're going to use. So you'll need that kit. You need that prep kit. You need this disposable kit, which has this plunger. It comes like this. When you open it, be careful. This will fall out on the ground. You need, uh, usually on the hip you're going to do two batches of cement always. So I just have one here for the demo. And uh, this this also is in the kit. There's the small restrictor that I was talking about. That's, uh, you can, the doctor will usually tell you which one he wants. Perhaps always minimum two. Correct. Could be more, but usually yeah, it's Yeah, it could two. be three, but never, never one. Always two and more. You'll break your... You'll break the femur if you use one. So we know that. Perfect. The problem with this is that sometimes people are missing one of the items. And if you don't have all of them and you already start mixing, you're in trouble. Make sure you have a cement gun. Make sure you have that disposable kit. And make sure you have this. And then your mixer, which is this big tower. You and then your power. Uh, you also need your hookup to the pulse back, your lung. Well, but that's a separate thing. You can do the case without the cement part of it without the pulse back. There's a long cement nozzle for pulse backing, which looks like a little one, but it's this long. And it's for pulse backing the canal. That doesn't have anything to do with the cement. But you do need it. If you're going to cement, you do need it. That's I, one of the things that a nurse But it is one of the things we would have opening in the bin. That's true. So, what is that, the high flow tip? No, it's just a, it's a long pulse back tip. Way. There might be, if you want to grab one out of the cupboard. Femoral tip, there. the name. So, um, the things to remember is, is that if you kind of make sure you have all of your stuff in order, then you know you can go through the steps. So once the doctor's ready to submit, um, I'm going to talk about how this thing works before we actually mix it. So this is actually three pieces. There's this tower that's on top. This is actually your piece that goes in your cement gun. So once the cement is mixed, you're going to take this off and you're going to screw this nozzle on. And once it's on there. It will slide. There's a little flat spot on both sides of this that fit in the grooves on here. It will only go on there one of those two ways. They're still with pressurized. It doesn't matter which one you put it on, really, because they both do the same thing. But you, usually I put it on pressurized. You can push this up to wherever it engages the cement and you feel it start pushing. It's just like a caulking gun. And it will be, this will be on here with cement in this tube. That's what you're, the step you're getting to. So that's how that's all going to work. And you cannot take this back off until this plungers pull all the way back out. So where people run into trouble is putting this on. What you want to do is there's a little arrow. If you always come up and look at this afterwards, there's a little arrow on top of this. When you put take this off of the cement mixing system and grab this, you take this tab, line it up with that arrow, and screw them together. And when you come around to the side, it's going to click on that little tab and it's locked in place. You're going to pressurize it with the gun and hand it to the doctor and he's going to start using it. And at that point, he's going to ask for this blue scooper probably. A blue what? And he's going to the scooper. Scooper. Oh, scoop. He's going to use this blue spatula and scoop the spent out around the hip uh, stem that's excess. And then he's going to pressurize more. Then at one, some point, he's going to decide it's time to actually pressurize, which is going to push the cement out into the bone. And he's going to pull this back out and he's going to say, he's going to just point this at you with the gun. That's where people get kind of get confused, I think. You're going to put this, some of the doctors like to have this little uh, pressurizer already on here. Most of the time, it's not a good idea. They put this black tube that you got down to this line that's on this um, shaft and break this off. And it will snap off pretty easy. But if you put it right to the black line, it breaks off really easy. Then you put this blue pressurizer over the top of it. Doesn't matter which way you turn it, he's going to put it in the hip and turn it where he wants it. He's going to pressurize more and use this blue scoop again to get all the excess cement out. When he's done, he's just going to hand this back to you. And this is, you're all done with all of it. And that's the whole gist of it. I'm not sure where people run into issues with it, but if you have questions or you're not sure about what the steps are, 
That's the, the quick rundown of them. Well, can you make sure that they know as soon as he hands them back to them, <coughs> that they take it out and take it off the gun? Because we've had people right. leave it on the gun, and now it's glued. Right, so a couple yeah. things. So. Um, the top of this threads in, what I try to do just to keep the mess from being, once this is out, this is where we're going to go over the steps of the pressurizing and mixing, because it's kind of confusing. Um, I just, you can leave this laying wherever, because it's all going to be disposed of. When this is, this tower is put together, this is your lid with your, your um, paddles to mix with, and there's a little tab on here that releases your pressure. Because you're going to use pressure from here, and that sucks the air out of the chamber in there to make the cement more dense. So when this is on and locked in place, I don't know if this, is this turned on? It is turned on. Yeah. When this is actually turned on, it will suck this lid down on there, whether it's on there correctly or not. But it is good to have it turned on there correctly. Okay, so now we have pressure. Usually you go up to the green, which is uh, a mark on here, which is 20. And that's pressurized now. Once this is mixed, for your two minutes, now we had an issue, I guess, with the two minute thing too. Two minutes is a relative time. That's the manufacturer's recommendation. If it's 74 degrees in the room, it's going to be hardening in four minutes, so you don't want to go two minutes. You will watch the clock, and if you can feel when you're mixing this, if it's starting to get stiff, then you need to stop and you're done. Sometimes it's around like a minute and 40 seconds, a minute and a half. But with the hip, it's very important because you've got to pressurize it through this tube. Um, so you can't have thick cement or you won't be able to get it out of the gun. Um, what you're going to do once you've got the two components mixed in there, we're going to do all this in a second. Once they're mixed in there, and you do your minute and a half, minute and 40 seconds of stirring, you can see that the powder is all dissolved and mixed with the liquid. You pull this release vacuum tab, which releases the pressure, and then you're going to hammer this thing down. This thing will actually break the seal on the bottom of this tube and let the cement drop into this caulking gun. That's all it's going to do. Now, some people push this first and then pull the tab. I've done it both ways and it works both ways. The point is you want to release the pressure and let the cement drop. If you don't see the cement dropping in there, then you didn't do something right. You either have to push this down or you have to release the pressure because the pressure is holding the cement in there. So, um, let's just release it. The pressure. All right, so Kelly's going to actually mix the cement. So about this time when you're getting your components ready, I, before you ever put the liquid in there, make sure you have all these pieces, including the pulse of tip that Ron was talking about, which they're going to be using right now. So if you didn't have that tip, Katie's got them there. Then you just stop. You, you're, you're not you're not having bought anything yet as far as dry time because that's not mixed. So you're good. If you see something's missing or somebody drops something, um, we should probably back up a second about this before we finish. The two different cement restrictors, the doctor's going to size it with ones that are in your bipolar trays. He's going to say it's a 10 or 11 or 12. And once he decides that, he'll say, you just say, do you want the smaller or the large cement restrictor, which is either this plug or this larger one. And he will say, oh, the small one. So you just thread it on this little green rod and hand it to him. Oftentimes, Dr. Edwards, for sure, will measure this against the hip stem. He'll take the stem that you're going to implant, and he'll hold this up to it. There's measurements on here. He wants to know how far down to put this. This is just keeping cement from going all the way down the bone canal to your knee. It's an implant. That's your implant. Yeah, that's the reason you don't want to throw the package away, because the nurses have to chart these as an implant. And the nurse will ask you, did you put the smaller or the large one in? And you just tell him. He'll measure. He'll hold the hip stem up like this, and he'll go, He'll put his finger here, and then he'll put this in the patient, and he'll tap this down or push it down to where the mark is he wants, and then he threads this off and leaves this in the bone. And that stays in the patient. So if any of these things fall off or you drop them, you just get another one before you start mixing. Um, now, are those, are those, do you have to open a whole little package for the, the spacer? Yep, yeah, these little things? Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they come in that kit. Um, that separate. This big bottle brush comes in that kit. This, I don't know what tampon. they really call this. They call it yeah. the power tampon, tampon but it's called a tampon. that's what they call, they call it. It's a tampon so they will, once they're done pulse vacuuming, they will stick this down the canal and hook this up to suction. And it just basically sucks suctioning out blood during the 
process, which helps the cement in, uh, digitate into the bone. So those all come in the kit. They, some of the doctors don't use either one of these. So it just depends on how they, at the time, if they're in a hurry, they may not use it, or if they don't think the patient's bleeding a lot, then they may not use it. So I think, are we ready to mix? Okay. So Billy's got the stuff here ready. She's going to pour that in there. And I always tell everybody in the room we're mixing. So everybody knows that you're on the clock well, then. When we're mixing, the nurse has to go over and put the, the clock. Right, we're going to put the clock on back there. Olivia, can you reach the clock switch or Katie or somebody? So the stopwatch is the best thing to use. If for some reason it's off kilter and you can't use it, you can use whatever. You just need to do the two minutes. So once it's poured in, you got to always remember those glass things go in your sharps container because they will touch it. She's going to pressurize up to 20. But if this thing is not hooked up, which does happen, start mixing anyway. I mean, you can mix it without being pressurized. It's still going to work. It just helps make the cement more dense and gets the air bubbles out of it. So she's going to mix it for approximately two minutes. And while I'm mixing it, I'm looking to see. I usually have all the stuff laying around. But if Dr. Burzak with you, he's moved it all over. So you look around to see where all your pieces are and keep them back on your table where you know where everything's at. I usually throw a towel up on the failing table and throw up the cement stuff in a row so it's, everybody can see it. So he's not putting around looking for this or whatever. So okay. the cement restrictor will be already down in place. Your stem will be already open and ready to go. And the mixing she's got, uh, not even quite a minute yet. So, you can do both. I usually hold the thing in my hand and go both ways like this. Just whatever you want to do. So once the uh, cement's mixed, you're, the first thing you do is, is unpressurize this and drop the cement into the chamber. So we're about a minute. So how do you pop being pool or pool being pop? Pool being pop. So we're going to pull this little tab. You'll hear the pressure release. We're going to hit this down. And then I just take this off and start and I hit cut the tubing so that the air escapes too. Out of that chamber and it's got dropped down into the canal where it's supposed to be. So we'll screw that off. She'll take her tab, line the little tab up with the arrow, thread it around. It will screw on when it's not lined up with the arrow. It just won't lock in place necessarily. When you pump, the tip come out. Put that out. on the gun. Put the little switch to pressurize. She's ready to go. So the doctor now is going to say, are we ready? He's going to touch the cement at the end and see how sticky it is. Decide how much he wants. Some of them like it more thick than others. And <laughs> so what we can do is I'm gonna work the cement out. Uh -huh. So she's gonna put out some cement here. Like we're putting it in the put out some more. So this is actually theoretically going in the hip. So the doctor's gonna stop then and he's gonna point that gun at you. And you're gonna put this plunger in here like this. And then bring this off. Nice. So that, that stays on, or you put it on there, one of the two. It's your choice. So if he had it already on there, some of the doctors like it all put together ahead of time. Then he's going to put it back in the hip, and he's going to pressurize, and use the blue scoop. And he's going to be scraping the cement around and having you put it on a, a lap sponge. And you're going to keep doing that until he's satisfied with how much he's got in there and he's going to push them the stem down, and he's going to hand that back to you. Once he hands it back to you, make sure, like Yvonne said, to take that out of there before the cement hardens. Because if this gets stuck in there to the cement, it's really hard to get it apart. You can, but it's not easy. And then you always want to, if there's any, usually there will be no cement left in this tube. They will t use all of it. So you want to get a cement ball that's outside of that and keep it so you know when your cement's hard. Because now we're only at four minutes because it's not far away it's and you won't take it out. out. So a couple of times. Get the plunger out more. A couple of times so <laughs> <laughs> I'm like grabbing the wet towel.
Yeah, if this isn't all the way out, that's when you have problems getting it out. Because even if it's just in that one little clip right there, that sticking out won't let this pass by here because it's a very tight mm -hmm. seal. So even that little bit right there, just that one last little it out. bit is all it takes to keep it from uh, from coming apart. If you guys aren't familiar with the talking gun, we can show you how to work that as well. Just how to turn the levers. Yeah, I'm going to do that, but I'm going to get this enough out there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, all right. So now your cement's in, you're pressurized. Do we have questions about that? The only di there's no difference in how you mix it with this mixer. This is the mixer we use on total knees. There's also mixing bowls. You can mix this by hand just like you do cake batter. Um, this mixer pressurizes a little differently. You will drop this, untangle this, and drop this off the field, and this. Plugs into Make sure you know which port end goes down. On this, with these spatulas. You mix the cement the same way, you dump in the liquid and the powder, put this on, turn it, lock it, pressurize it to 20, and stir it for a minute and a half to two minutes. And then in this one, you don't have to hit anything, you just unplug this and it depressurizes. Drop it on the floor, and you're done. Open this up. I usually scrape all the extra cement off of this, so you, you always want to keep as much cement as you can. And then hand this to the doctor. And then they'll use it on the joint components or whatever they're going to use it for. So that's it. And can if you were going to mix, if you were going to mix three batches of cement, you put three batches of powder in that tower, which you can put three in there, and three liquids and mix them. So um, I don't know, questions. And can you what make problems that people run into with mixing the stuff, like on call or things they didn't remember or forgot or Probably timing when they're getting hard. And that's a lot of the temperature. Like right before we're going to mix, I look at it. If, if it's really warm, I ask the anesthesia to turn the temperature down. Sometimes a minute. You know, Some, it's, it's yeah. Just if it's say like 68 and above, you're probably just going to want to go maybe a minute, maybe a minute, mm -hmm. and a half. At the it's time. more critical on hips than on knees, which you guys aren't going to be doing these generally, because you have to get it through this coffee nut. Mm -hmm. So you're better off. The key to the mixing process is to make sure there's no powder in there. So once the powder, if you can see through the top of this window on here, once the powder is uh, is all mixed with a liquid and you can see it in there, it's good. Because the chemical reaction is going to take place and it's going to harden anyway. So the key is you don't want powder in there. Yeah, it, these things, some people are a little leery of breaking these off. They are a little tricky and you can cut yourself. It's protected by this little shield around the top. I try to just kind of put my hands together and break it like with my thumbs touching, because that way um, I'm not gonna slide and mm -hmm. touch myself, but you always have to watch, like Kelly just said. I have seen pieces of this glass break off of there. So when you break this off, if you notice when you pour it in there, a chunk of glass fall in there, I grab it with a pickup and pull it out, because it will pour for you. Yeah, or something and get it out of there because it, little fragments do sometimes fall in there. When do you use the carboniacin powder? Well, all the cement that we get upstairs for most of everything now is all tobermycin. The, uh, the only cement that we have that's not are half batches of cement. You can get non tobermycin if there's an allergy, but, but for the most part, we're always going to be using tobermycin cement. Um, or they need extra? I don't think that uh, mm -hmm. you guys are going to have to worry about on call. I guess with Sebesma, maybe he would add, or Verzac might add, tobermycin or some other vancomycin powder, which you can get from CP or from a uh, from pharmacy, and add it to the cement. And all you do usually is pour that powder in with this mixture and mix it in, and it's just giving it a higher concentration of antibiotics. Um, which we've done with people with infection. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I'm sorry. So. That's okay. I've already played with it before. <laughs> but I like to. Make sure. So, anybody, the steps, anybody confused about the steps with the breaking off the. Folder? You want to play? So, the reason that that was hard for no. me to break off is Kelly was holding this against her, which made me not be able to push this back to get the plunger down there. So, usually he's just holding it out of the air, and he'll just have you push the plunger down and break it off. But if you're holding it against you, then obviously you're fighting each other. So you just gotta let the plunger, because it's all the way up, you gotta let it come back when you're putting this down to break it off. Um, guys, just make sure you slide this 
sign the sign-in sheet because you on your little check